put you here. This is the video receiver okay. and the relay for the goggles, one battery. You can power it on first and then forget about it. Okay. Power on your screen. And then finally, power on your plane. Wait 30 seconds. Well, first, you have to turn on the, the camera. Okay, so you have to wait to get satellites and then it will automatically set the home position. So you just wait, and then it will do count to 200 and it will automatically set the home position. This is the altitude. That's your airspeed, that's ground speed, that's zoom in, that's um, your main battery voltage, 24 volts. You should start coming home, or you should land uh, over 20 volts. So once it gets to 20 volts, in fact, it will flash and then you should land. That's the voltage regulator output to power the, um, uh, to power the video transmitter. Waypoint is a waypoint. The distance is very extreme because it hasn't set a home position yet. Line of sight distance to the airplane and then the ground distance to the airplane. These distances are incorrect now because we don't have any satellites. This is your uh, signal strength for the UHF. We already connected the UHF, I'll show you. Um, this ranges from about minus 40 on the ground, which is the strongest signal. The lower the number, the stronger the signal, to minus 110. And in fact, this number, as the distance doubles, this number will go up, increase by six decibels. So you're one kilometer away, you're 55, you go two kilometers, it's gonna be at 61. So that's the rule for this. Uh, this is your degrees above horizon, minus 90 degrees again, because we have the wrong altitude so far, and it's not initialized, but this will be the degrees, the airplane is above the horizon. So you wanna keep this at two, two degrees or three degrees above horizon to maintain a good video signal and also um, don't fly behind buildings um, your heading that's a GPS heading your power consumption 12 watts this airplane can cruise at around 80 watts which is about 3.3 amps uh, timer okay see now it's working we have the waypoint the first waypoint already loaded 800 meters away and have some sats it's going to start searching home and it will set home position after that we can come back and i'll show you the modes so now let's look at the uhf uh, very simple just connect the power this led will flash if there's no signal from the remote it's solid now so it has a signal from the tyrannus um, this battery should last Around, well, I don't even know. I think around 20 hours. Um, and that's it for that. So, in fact, this has a redundant uh, system. So, redundant receiver system. So, this remote, this is the transmitter. This transmits to this receiver. And this receiver connects by PPM to this relay. Now, this transmits directly, directly to the OSD UHF system. And also there's a second receiver here. This is the antenna. Just like that one on the UHF. And this receiver also works. So when you're in close range, this receiver is active. This is RX1. And then when you go out of range of this receiver, the OSD automatically switches to the UHF. So in case your battery dies on the UHF um, or something goes wrong with the transmitter uh, that we saw up there, you still have control 
with this. If you're out of range, it's gonna come back home and then you take over control. Okay, I'll show you the mode. So, uh, the home position is set. We no longer are searching satellites. We're not setting home. This altitude, minus 52, it will reset to zero as soon as we start moving. Um, here's the mode switches. So, one and two. These are the only switches to control uh, the OSD in flight. So if you toggle up, you switch screens. This is the main screen. This is what we call the radar screen. This is the debug screen, which you can disable, and then it will be blank, and only warnings will display, like if your battery is low. So we can disable this in the menu. You need the remote to go in here. Um, this is the in-flight menu, so you can use your, your stick, aileron, an elevator stick to, to navigate the menu. And set stabilization gains. You can adjust some uh, display settings for like the display screen. You can turn off the ahi. Uh, you can change the cruise speed, change the minimum maximum thrust for the autopilot. But this is all set up already for the airplane, so you don't need to do this. So you toggle up again to get out of this menu. If you toggle down, it enables the it enables the autopilot. So you see fly by wire enabled. In fact, this mode the display will hide and you'll just see these two dashes which means autopilot is enabled. I'll show you here. I'll, I'll take it away. On, off, on, fly-by-wire. And this is the mode selector. So you have different modes like waypoint seeker, uh, position hold, heading hold, and return to home. And I'm not going to enable it now because the propeller will spin but uh, all the way to the right is waypoint seeker. All the way to the left is um, return to home. I can show you just briefly here. You see, I see, etc. And now it's in fly-by-wire. So I toggle again and get out. I take off in fly-by-wire mode. So I enable it. I make sure the surfaces are moving in the right direction. So I go, and I look. If it's correct, then it's fine. Uh, pan and tilt, self-explanatory. You can get the camera. Okay. The top hatch just clicks on, make sure everything's aligned so it's and nothing is bothering it. And that should hold. Ah, so now the this step is for the antenna tracker. So the antenna tracker doesn't have any compass or any reference. So it doesn't know which way it's oriented. So you have to align it with the airplane. So the reason it's not tracking is because last time we were flying going south. Now we're flying going north. And this has a limited range of rotation, 180 degrees. So we must set this orientation now. You go into the menu and you set heading offset. And you exit the menu like this. So now that's done, we can fly going north. It's called the heading offset menu option okay go left I don't know if you can see that okay go right Okay, it's working. That's all you need to do here. This LED indicator, telemetry okay, means that it's getting good video because the telemetry for this system, for this ground station, is embedded into the video signal. And this is the decoder. So if you lose video signal, you will lose 
your antenna tracking position and uh, you won't have any telemetry here. Uh, the one good feature inside this is inside this ground station is that it has um, it shows you the last known good coordinates so in case your airplane goes down you'll always have your coordinates to go look for it. It has four video outputs to, uh, to connect like um, TVs or other monitors and it has a video diversity system so you can actually connect two receivers I mean two video sources and it will select the better one based on video signal quality like video sync okay so this is working now Alright, now I'll show you uh, how to bind the RV link and how to change any settings in the RV link. So there's a little button where it says bind, you have to push down and then you apply power. And that flashing power indicator means that it's in bind mode. And then you go into the RVOSD menu and you select trans receiver configuration. And you can change the settings here for the trans receiver for this one and for the R receiver. So I want to change the frequency to 440 megahertz and I want to increase the, out, the power to 27 dBm and then to apply these settings you have to bind it again so you go to bind main and then you hit menu on the remote and that saves those settings so then I would like to save configuration on the OSD you always have to save anytime you make any settings changes you save and menu again I'm out of the menu and we can go for another flight hopefully it'll be good do we set home yeah we set home already okay so again I go all the way up trim and then I can take off check the throttle it's working. You can take off. It's not about wire. Okay. I can do it like this. I don't need It's fine. Well, never mind. Yeah. Fly by wire is on. Everything's working. Five, four, three, two, one. Saying heading, where do I go now? Just north. So I'm heading home right now. Why did it turn? Is it because? Okay, maybe it's it saves the heading position when I engage autopilot, but when I switch the mode, it remembers the old heading. I think that's how it works. I think that should change. Still waypoints. No, no, the plane.
Yes. Ten kilometers. Yeah. Uh, ten kilometers. Yeah. That's fine. We can stop recording now. Cruising at 80 watts, around 40 kilometers an hour. 60 kilometers an hour ground speed, 40 airspeed. The size nice and stable. Okay. No other things looking okay here. Oh, I forgot to turn on the advanced screen again. Fifteen meters within fifteen meters, and then continue to the next one. Okay. We could two, take two RV links, one with the old firmware, one with the new firmware. Take the old antenna. You can get a video. It's coming from that. I can see it. Come for landing. I reduced the throttle, cut the throttle completely. Wow. Thank you.